Hey, B-Side TV, I'm Emily Kretzer, and we're here at WeWork Hollywood on La Brea with Karima Francis, who will be performing Shelf Life and a B-Side, Bridge Too Far. Take it away. Thank you. Take a turn in to a desolate morning. I spot a man who carries a sack of clothes on his shoulder. He's mouthing the vowels from the alphabet we share. In our beds, we are Countless relying on literary rights There are strangers on the outskirts Roaming fast and far away With their questions, directions To never look back Restorations pushed back on the shelf And it's hard
my name is Karima Francis and uh, this is my B-side. It's called A Bridge Too Far. When evening the moon rose over a river We sat at a table and we laughed at a joke Though our words have no meanings, our eyes held the truth Wondering where this might go So we danced around the fire And hold back small desires It's not that we're that far apart it's just a bridge too far Whenever the real world holds up a dream We make up a fable and set sail on a boat Though our thoughts held no meanings Our minds like an ocean we fantasize where it might go So we danced around the fire And hold back small desires It's not that we're that far apart It's just a bridge too far If I could cross that river It would lead me straight to you I would cross that river But it's not what I should do Francis, thank you so much for joining us. We, thank you for having me. Yeah, we are so grateful to have you here and to have heard such a beautiful rendition of Shelf Life, which is your latest single. Yes. Um, the story behind Shelf Life is really wonderful, and I'd love to hear more about it. It's essentially a call to action to, you know, try and get more people talking about the homelessness issue, especially here in LA. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really curious because since you're not an LA native, how this cause became so close to your heart and it really is such an important thing that we should all be talking about and how you got talking about it. Um, okay, yeah, it, it, it was, um, I actually came out here, I had the opportunity to, to record with some really cool producers and so I, um, I came over to LA at the, at the beginning of the year, and um, I'd been to LA before, like about four or five years ago, and um, what struck me this time when I came back, I think it was January, that I, um, yeah, I saw a lot of homelessness people, and it wasn't just homelessness people, you know, just homeless, it was people with mental health problems, you know, um, and I felt, there was a big population of people helpless in, you know, and basically, you know, you could see them every day and they were, they were kind of every, everywhere that, that you went, these people that were really struggling and in despair and it felt like people just didn't see them and I felt this like, um, 
Yeah, it's weird because I am from the UK and stuff, and obviously we have homelessness there. Um, and it's, it's a problem all over the world. But what struck me here was the contrast of living standards. You know, obviously right. you've got this LA lifestyle that, you know, people come here to follow their dreams. And, and, um, and I felt really bad writing about it because it's not like I wanted to write about it like, oh, I'm championing like homelessness to try and like gain stuff for myself. It's not like that. It was a natural right, thing. Right, right, right. Um, I was on the way to a studio one morning and I saw some people on, on actually Hollywood Boulevard and... I, when I got there to the studio, I just couldn't, I couldn't, um, I was quite shocked and emotional and I, it just happened, I just sat down and wrote the song. So yeah, I mean, um, and we just went forward with it, with the first single, because it just made so much sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, at the time. Well, it's beautiful and it, like you said, like there is such a disparity between the wealth here and the poverty and it's and it's disturbing it's disturbing it's really yeah. disturbing I mean, i've been reading a lot about it and i read the other day just in the la times that um there's actually um 41,000 empty homes in la and i think the population is 39,000 homelessness mm -hmm. homeless people in california maybe in la i don't know maybe i got that wrong but yeah it's just crazy that um yeah, there's so many places to go. I know it's a it's a bigger it's a bigger picture than that. You know, it's mm -hmm. obviously dealing with them medically and stuff. But um, yeah, it breaks my heart. And uh, even if it raises awareness to one person and makes them think, you know, maybe we could do a little bit more, um, that would make me happy. Totally. Well, the video is equally as stunning. And yes, it's it's stunning. Yeah, I had the look of uh, working with a a friend of mine. Um, and he's great. Um, he came over from Paris, actually. My mm -hmm. manager, had, we met this young boy in the street in London, bumped into him with a Rolleiflex camera around his neck. <laughs> and we were like, oh, do you take pictures? And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm just on a school trip. There's this Parisian boy. And um, then when we were coming over here to like just explore the options of recording out here, um, my manager had actually said, oh, we're going to LA. Do you want to come and shoot pictures of mm -hmm. Karima? So he came here as a photographer. And um, then I wrote that song, went to the studio, recorded it. The same day when I heard back the first mix, I was like, right, we have to go out and film a day in the homeless person's life to mm -hmm. get that perspective. And he happened to bring his, um, his video camera and a Super 8 camera with him as well, just for himself. Um, and we shot the whole video in a couple of days. And it's just, it's amazing how the whole thing was so natural, you know? Yeah, well, speaking of natural, this is, pretty serendipitous that you met a homeless man. His name is Terry. And Terry, yeah. I would love to hear more about him. And I'm sure everyone else would as well, because he's prominently featured in the video. And it's his story. And you know, he's just one face to so many people who are struggling. And it's such an important thing that you've been able to tell his story. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about him. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, when, when we realized we had to make this video, we had to use someone that was a you know sound mind that could understand you know what we were doing and what we were trying to achieve and when we ex um, it was actually we were in an uber uh we were with our friend actually um and we jumped out of the car my manager went to this guy that was sat on the bench and he was he you know we could work with him and obviously you know we, we paid him and um and spent a lot of time with him and yeah terry was an interesting guy he was a nashville star back in like the wow. 70s he came here for a better life, and he's been on the streets for like 20 years. Wow. So he was actually in the video, you could see him like reciting, well, singing songs in the drive through at McDonald's in Silver Lake, and he's actually singing his songs, which are country songs there, and he's actually incredible. Oh my gosh. Um, and he was very emotional throughout the day, he kept crying, and then him and Joseph went down to Skid Row. Um, I didn't go, but I sent my 19-year-old director <laughs> with Terry, and afterwards I felt so bad because I didn't know what, what, what he was going to expect. Terry had his back. Terry had his back, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. It's been great so far. Like has People Terry have enjoyed the, the music and the video, so. Yeah, has Terry been able to see the video? We have, we have been on the lookout for him. Yeah. Um, uh, since we've been here. 
he was actually used to sit on um, Sunset over towards uh, Silver Lake, but we've actually not seen him, and obviously we want to and show right. the video. Um, if we do, we will, of course. Probably will be another serendipitous, serendipitous meeting if you happen across yes, him, I right? Hope so. He was on a list to wait in the house um, for like a disability payment. He told me anyway, so I, I pray to God that you know that's all gone, gone ahead and he's he's house now. Us as well. So I know it's probably very difficult to follow up that video, but you do have you know more things in the works, another video in the works. Oh yeah, and so we I'm, can look out for that in the new year. Yes, I'm going out to um, Vegas on the weekend. Um, uh, yeah, and we're just gonna go and we're gonna go and shoot out in the desert in Nevada, and um, so I'm looking forward to that. And the new single is gonna be out in February as well. Um, I won't talk too much about it though. Yeah, we can wait and see for ourselves, yes, right? Yes, yes. So at B side, we have to ask you what your favorite B side of all time is. So. Curious as to what yours might be. Mine's definitely going to be Forget Her by Jeff Buckley. I remember when I first heard that, that B-side, and um, yeah, it became one of my favorite songs of his ever, and I was just thinking, why did that not go on Grace? And uh, yeah, that's, that's my favorite song. It's a good one. It's yeah. a good one. Well, Karima, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and I, I really yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night, and thank you for... Thank you. For, for, um, yeah. Thank, conversation. Yeah, thank you for your conversation and for, you know, bringing this important message to light. We're really appreciative of that, for That's sure. really lovely of you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. B-Side, thank you so much for joining us. You can find Karima on Twitter and Instagram at Karima Francis. That's Sonia. We'll see you next time.